Welcome to Piano Day at the Sydney Opera House, being held today, the 88th day of the year, representing the 88 keys on the piano. We're really pleased to be participating in this annual worldwide celebration of the piano, though we're bringing it to you in a slightly different form from how we expected even a couple of weeks ago due to COVID-19. But we're continuing on because through thick and thin, we believe in the power of art and culture and ideas to transform lives. In many senses, today is a trial run because next week we'll be starting our new series of digital programming called From Our House to Yours. I really hope you'll join in that longer program, but in the immediate term after today, please do give us your feedback so that we can make From Our House to Yours the very best it can be. So to Piano Day. It was established in 2015 by Nils Fram, wonderful friend of the Opera House, because he wanted to provide a platform for pianists of all interests and ages and stages to be able to showcase their piano-led projects. There's going to be an interview with Nils Fram that was recorded here um, only a couple of months ago. There'll be two recordings um, by by John Hopkins and Ute Beving, recorded in very special corners of the Opera House over the last three months. Then we're bringing you through three new live digital recordings that people have made over the last week in their house. They are Margaret Leng Tan, who is a, an experimental pianist and toy piano expert who was actually supposed to be here at the moment, but she's going to provide us a piece from her home in Brooklyn. Sydney-born pianist Andrea Lamb is going to play Brahms from her house in New York and Australia's very own virtuoso Simon Tedeschi is going to be playing Debussy for us. There's also a lovely little segment of three children with Terry, our piano tuner, and I love the fact that Terry, who's been tuning our pianos for many, many years, was taught the art by his father, who was the Opera House's first piano tuner. So I really hope you enjoy the next 45 minutes of this program and I want to give very special thanks to the New South Wales Government, to our corporate partners and donors and to our special sponsor of today, Yamaha. Enjoy Piano Day. The piano is, is kind of the mother of the key instruments. When you think of a keyboard, or you see a keyboard, you think of a piano. There's obviously organs and synthesizers and cembalos and all other types of uh, key instruments, which I love personally as well. I use them for my music. But the piano is basically yeah, the king of all these instruments. Piano Day came together one day in the car, I was stuck in traffic and I was thinking about uh, holidays. I think I was listening to the radio for some holiday, like the World Flower Day or something was announced and I was like, yeah, great. I could also make up a holiday. It seems to be pretty easy. I just would call it the Piano Day. And then I thought like, yeah, when should it be? Obviously on the 88th day of the year. And so I told that my friends and I said, let's do it for piano builders, for piano innovators, for players, but also technicians to uh, have a forum where they could uh, exchange and meet and hear about other people's work. Yeah. We get so many incredible songs sent in by famous and non-famous musicians each year that I'm very humbled and amazed by all that quality and all the different styles you really see like how much music comes out of an open approach to that very old instrument. A lot of it is just also inspiring me for my work. Pianos are there to be played, even if you never had lessons, even if you never learned how to play. Open the draw board and uh, the fall board and play a little bit. Somebody else has to make the guitar day. I'm not really good at the guitar. <laughs> I spent many years 
with quite a complex shows, lots of production, lots of different sounds. But on every album, uh, there's been like a few piano solos. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm just feeling myself wanting to go in that direction again. Piano has uh, uh, sort of been a presence in my life since I was about four, maybe three years old actually. I, I don't know exactly when it was, but I went round to a friend's house um, quite regularly and he had a piano and I just remember being like significantly more interested in just playing notes on that and listening to how they, how the sound evolved. There's something about simplicity, I think, and also it's taken me a while to feel like the desire to have to strip away as much as possible. But um, I don't know, these days I just feel more confident that that one instrument can actually hold an audience. I recently have been trying to branch out beyond just using my own upright that I always had um, into using different grands and going, going and like trying out different studios and different miking techniques and stuff like that. Because, yeah, I've noticed that whatever I'm doing, the improvisation responds to what I'm hearing. So, therefore, if I make a particular electronic sound, then a certain, a certain thing will come out um, melodically. So, yeah, it's always like a response to what I'm hearing. I've been wanting to play here for many years um, as a headliner and you know it was a bit of a dream to get to do that. That's why I thought it would be nice to open the show with just 20 minutes of piano. Also really nice to come back today and perform in this highly unusual shaped space. Um, I think it's got a really amazing natural acoustic. I like playing piano in unusual spaces. So, you know with front right next to Sydney Harbour Bridge it was a pretty a pretty special one. And I think the sound in here is actually surprisingly beautiful. Any piece of music should be able to induce a kind of meditative state. To me, the quiet stuff and the loud stuff are actually the same. I know that sounds crazy when you hear them. One is high energy and one is zero energy, but they're both about the trance state and about yeah, the transcendent state and you know the euphoria and the kind of restorative process that those can uh, instigate. Ambience resurgence is is, an, is to do with the need for people to calm themselves down. People are just sort of kind of operating on a survival mode and, and ambient can really bring you out of that. And you don't have to focus on it when it's on, you can have it, you can listen to it on different levels, which is not true of most music. So I think it's kind of a very versatile and very therapeutic genre generally. It's been difficult as, a, as music has become very much uh, a profession as well as just a love to remember sometimes I should just go and sit and play for myself and not record it and not have any ambition. It's very hard because as soon as you start playing ideas start coming and you're like I've got to capture that but it's, it's important to just retain playing an instrument as a meditation for, for the performer as well.
I am Margaret Lang Tan, and I am coming to you from Brooklyn, New York. I am performing as part of Sydney Opera House's Piano Day broadcast. Last week's performances of my theatrical and sonic memoir, Dragon Ladies Don't Weep, as part of the Opera House's Unwrapped series, was thwarted by COVID-19. However, I am hopeful that you will get a chance to see it when the world regains its axis. In the meantime, my Dragon Lady interview with Gabriel Wilder is on the Sydney Opera House website as part of their World Piano Day celebration. I'm going to play for you John Cage's Dream from 1948 in my own arrangement for piano and toy piano. John Cage was a seminal force in my life, as he also was for many others. I had the great privilege of knowing him and working with him for the last 11 years of his life. Now I will play for you his dream. This beautiful piece, I hope, will offer an oasis of solace during these topsy-turvy times. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Andrea Lamb, and I'm thrilled to be joining you for the Sydney Opera House Piano Day from New York, from my in-law's living room. Ta-da! While I would have loved to have joined you in the Utzon Room for the Utzon Music Series, I'm very grateful to be joining you digitally. I first played in the Sydney Opera House with the amazing Sydney Symphony when I was 13, playing Shostakovich's second piano concerto. I have such vivid memories of that performance and of all the performances since with the SSO in the Opera House. I'd like to play two pieces for you by Brahms from his Klavierstücke Opus 118. Late Brahms piano works have always been music that I've turned to in times of uncertainty, of grief, of incredible joy, of sadness, basically whenever you really need music and art. The first intermezzo starts with an impassioned outcry and swirls around and searches until it ends in a ray of sunshine with a major chord. The second intermezzo is one of the most beautiful and intimate and personal pieces um, and music that I've turned to fairly often. A quick word about this piano. Uh, it was never meant for performance, um, but I am very grateful to have it to share this beautiful music with you today. So happy piano day and I hope you're all staying safe and healthy.
Today we're here at the Sydney Opera House to meet someone special. We don't know who it is, but we know they're in the lift. So let's find out who's in the lift. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Indy. My name's Oliver. Hi, my name's Emma. What's your name? Hi Emma, I'm Terry. Hi Terry. What do you do here in the Opera House? Uh, my job is I tune all the pianos in the Opera House. How did you become a piano tuner? Well, when I left school at age 18, my father, who was the first piano tuner at the Opera House back in 1973, he asked me if I wanted to, to learn piano tuning, so I went and learned to be a piano tuner. How many pianos are at your opera house? Uh, we have about 30 pianos at the opera house. Grand pianos and some upright pianos. Oh my goodness, that's a lot. It, it is a lot of pianos. When you play the piano, piano, do you have to wear a uniform or just random clothing? I used to wear a suit and a tie when I was younger but times have changed, so I just wear a normal shirt and some jeans. Okay, so, first we have this thing here. It looks like a bat. It looks like a bat. It's called a tuning hammer. Mm -hmm. Now, as you can see, there's three strings on these notes, and they all have to be tuned together so that they sound the same. And I'll just put one out of tune so you can listen to it if it's out of tune, okay? Yeah, that sounds nice. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear that? Yeah. Okay. 
you hear that? Yeah. That means it's well out of tune. Okay, so if I want to make the piano in tune, you have to have to listen and I have to move the string until I can hear that it sounds the same. You have to do this for every single note? I do have to do it for every single note and there's 88 notes and 230 or 40 strings in the piano. Can I press a key? Press as many as you like, Indy. You want to start down at the bottom? Press the, the bottom note. It'll be really yeah, loud. Yeah, really loud. Oh. oh, listen to that one. Yeah, and now why don't you press the really high one at the top? It's exactly. really yeah. weird. <laughs> Can you play the piano? Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, Emma, I can't play the piano. I was very lazy when I was a little boy and stopped, stopped learning. I can play the piano. You can play the piano? Yes. Wow, what can you play? Ode to Joy. Wow. play so much better than me. And how old are you? Six. Six. Wow, pretty good. Thanks Terry, see you later. Thanks Terry. Thanks for telling me about your job Terry. Okay Indy, see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hi, it's Simon Tedeschi here. And I am thrilled to be performing as part of Sydney Opera House's Piano Day. Now, as you can see, it's somewhat different, and we all know why that is. I am uh, performing remotely from my home. These are very trying times that we're encountering at the moment. But uh, art has shown itself to be resilient, even in the face of uh, incredible strife, and this situation is no exception. The piece that I'm going to play for you today is Claire de Lune by Claude Debussy and I think captures many of the sentiments that we're feeling today. A sense of uh, wistfulness, a sense of, uh, in some cases, uh, real sadness, but also hope for the future and a sense of uh, the possibilities of a collected humanity. Debussy is one of my very favourite composers. He encapsulates everything I love about music, the idea that in order to break the rules, one must create new ones, and that's what he did. Claire de Lune uh, is part of a four-movement suite um, from a work called uh, Sweet Burger Mask. And the title was inspired by a poem by Paul Verlaine, one of my very favorite poets. And it goes like this. All sing in a minor key of victorious love and the opportune life. They do not seem to believe in their happiness and their song mingles with the moonlight. I hope you enjoy my rendition of Claire de Lune. 